friggin' tastic. You know, tonight we have Warren Cucurillo. Fascinating. From Duran Duran. From Missing Persons. Played a little with Frank Zappa. Did a little session work with Michael Jackson, so we'll get into all of that in about <laughs> ten minutes. Also, as promised, we have the what test. Can't wait. The women's heterosexual aptitude test. We've the, done the hat test. We've done the lat, lat test. test. And you're going to subject Anne to this, huh? We've done the gat test. Anne will be taking the test and uh, seeing how she fares. So that'll be coming up a little bit later on in the show. And for now, let's get to the phones. Camille. Yeah. You're on Loveline. Hi. Thanks a lot. How are you both doing? Good. Good, good. Okay, my question in a nutshell. Um, I've seen this guy for about three years, and now um, about a year into the whole relationship, he said to me that he thinks he likes guys. Mm hmm. <laughs> did, did how did that come up? And what context did that? Um, yeah, all right, well, when I first started seeing him, um, it was a really odd situation. We both lived in the same house in college, and uh, and so we just sort of ended up in each other's beds all the time. Just, I, I, I mean, it was what? it was real cool. Did you get that? Yeah, they lived within a mile from each other, so naturally they screwed every night. Uh, no, 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 we lived in the same house. Oh, well. In college. God knows I've had my mom a few times. You know, that was early on. Oh, shush. You know, no, when, uh, when we were in college, we lived in the same house. But and, th that's, uh, that's not necessarily a good thing. It sounds cool, but you end right. up... You know, I, I went over to Drew's house for dinner the other week. That didn't mean I had to blow him. I wanted to blow him, but I didn't have to. Do you know what I'm saying, Camille? Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. But anyway, look, they they got it on, and they became boyfriend and girlfriend. Right. I mean, it was a, it's a relationship built on some sort of serendipity. There wasn't any, you know, who knows what the nature of that relationship is. Surprise, you found yeah, out I'm somebody different. I think it's serendipity, by the way. <laughs> nice. Right? I mean, you just found out he's somebody, you didn't even pay attention to who he was. He just had to be a guy in the house. No, no, no. no. We were completely good friends beforehand. Yeah. He was saying somebody else, and he had another mm -hmm. girlfriend before he even. Oh, that, that's even. And now, yeah. now and he's then, gay. Well, then, well, that's the question. I mean, can a person? I mean, he he has a bunch of he has had a bunch of other girlfriends. Uh huh. And now all of a sudden he's like, I really like Ken, and. And it that. didn't it didn't make you suspicious that he had to lift his uh, skirt up to have sex with you. <laughs> What, what is your question, actually, Camille? Okay, well, then my question is, so can a person just suddenly switch? A, <laughs> like a per typically, a person will suddenly admit to themselves or accept or be willing to explore or understand that that's the way they are. Well, that's the question about explore. That, yeah. Not at, that, not at your so, age. No, no, no. At your age, it's not so much experimentation. It's more like... At, at come, 20? Yeah, so, it's more coming to grips with who you really are. Really? Yeah, how old, how old is he? He's, right now he's 22, but at the time, I mean, it's been going on for about two years now. That he's been homosexual. Exploring? Yeah, yeah, and he's exploring. been uh, yeah. Ponce de Leon with the penis? Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. He doesn't, if if ever he does Lots of other really things, go into yeah. it, he won't, uh, he doesn't, he can't, like, if you talk about, well, what about kissing him? And he'll be like, oh, no, 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 I couldn't do that. Well, not every heterosexual female wants to get it on with every heterosexual guy and vice versa. That's true. I mean, just because you're gay doesn't mean you want to bang, you know, uh, Andy Rooney or something. <laughs> of course, you'd probably have uh, Warren Cucurillo. He's a piece of ass. Oh, thank you. He'll be in here in about five minutes. Uh, <clears throat> so you want to know, well, did he take the GAT test? I, I don't think he can hear you guys. Oh, okay. Well, that... I don't know. That would have been that Wasn't would have been the like deciding the white vote. Trash test from hell, though. No, not the GAT test. <laughs> the hat test was the white trash hell. <laughs> I mean, white <laughs> trash test from hell. Did, uh, did it have something to do with Leonard Skinner? Because he does have a Leonard Skinner. Test. Leonard Skinner mm. and, and bowling. Well, there's there there's still there's there may be a chance for this guy. <laughs> Camille, he likes guys. He's experimenting. Whether he's going to make a life out of it, we don't know. But either way, it's going to be a tough guy to be a girlfriend to. <clears throat> just Pardon me. Yeah, I. I mean, Drew. I mean, unless you mind. No, you get 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 on with your life. And it can be dangerous well, too. Him, I mean, you're putting yeah. yourself in a high risk type of situation. Let, let him let him go do what he needs to do. Uh huh. And wait for him. No. 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 <laughs> no. Camille. <laughs> yeah. Camille, you know, don't do that to yourself. Just just you know, learn about boundaries from this one. That you know, you don't you don't just kind of. Sleep with somebody because they are warm body having to be near Camille, you. Camille, when the doctor tells you to hop up on the table, do you actually jump on top of the table? You know it. Of course. Yes. She is uh, Miss Literalist. She's like um, Jaime the Robot from Get Smart. 
Yeah, the guy <clears throat> messaged all women out there. If your partner wants to go out and have relationships with uh, members of his own or anybody. sex or anyone. Let him go do it. You, you gotta go, it's right. not any different. That, everyone makes a huge distinction, by it, the way. It, it, it's different for this guy because he really is coming to grips with some whole new lifestyle occupation he's going to have. You know? But what I mean is if a relationship is monogamous right. and it someone wants to go isn't. outside of the relationship right. for a sexual liaison, whether it be... Man or a woman or a beast or whatever you're going outside of the relationship for, you're going outside of the right. relationship, right. and that breaks the rules. Nigel. Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good. Um, I've got a bit of a problem. My my mother comes home from work almost every night with um, a story about how a, a, a she-him um, comes into the women's bathrooms and uses uses the facilities in the bathroom. I suppose. I suppose it. It. it uh, is that the right word? It. I don't. She male. Fe, female. Is that she it? male. Is, is, it, is, it, is it a transsexual or is it a? I suppose. Tran- I, th- I think trans- it has a penis. transvestite or a, tra- or a transvestite. Or a can I? Say, no, no, no. What? Can I say penis on the air? Is that, yeah. No, you cannot say penis. Or penis, penis, penis. <laughs> so I think. No, I really. I think it has uh, male genitals, and it. It's. So it's a, like a, a woman. So it's a transvestite. Right. So right. it's it's going into the the women's bathrooms. So she comes home and, and you know, she's talking to me around the dinner table about how this how this this male and woman type thing. I don't know what to call it. Okay, but wait a minute, in. Nigel. How right. much time is your mother spending in the head? How much time is she spending in the woman's bathroom? Um, Does she work I, I in the? Really, no, I really wouldn't know. Probably. Well, knowing my mother, she always has to pee. I don't. Um, well, I, I, I really couldn't say. <laughs> I mean, Drew, what the hell are we talking about here? No. I don't know. All right. I, 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 <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> but the uh, accent was interesting. Will. Yeah, how you doing? Hey, you're on Love Line. Hi. Hi, hey. Drew. Hey, Will. Hi, hi, Adam. How you doing? Good. Uh, the question that I have is that I have a problem with. Uh, it's kind of like a fatal attraction that I'm go- that I'm suffering through here. I got this girl that's been calling me, and I have no idea who she is. She's been leaving all these raunchy messages on my voicemail, sending me valentines and whatnot. She's mm-hmm. no right. idea who she is, she, and I'm kind of freaked out about. Is she, is she threatening? What, excuse me. Is she threatening you in any way? No, she's not. But it's it's. You know, she just talks to me like she. I've never talked to her. I've never seen her. She's always just left these raunchy messages that she wants to come over and do these certain things to me. And you know, I'm just I'm kind of freaked out, but I'm also kind of stimulated in the same way. Well, this the, isn't part of some kind of Amway scheme or something, is it? No. No, she's just stalking you. I think so. Yeah. I yeah. Think, you know, I no I, I had a uh, I had a stalker once, uh, not really a stalker, but she would call up and and, and talk dirty mm-hmm. to me, and I always tried to meet her, and she would never. I mean, I went places and waited. You don't know who she was at all. You never never know who she was. She said she was a nurse. Uh. <laughs> I guess most stalkers, female stalkers, will choose that as a pr- profession. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, is it a big problem? Not really. I mean. Just because, you yeah. know, just because she calls randomly and leaves uh, all the stuff here, you know. I don't know, guys. I, I think that that freaks me out a little bit. I, I it worry, does? Yeah. I worry about the potential for problems with people that are capable of doing that kind of thing. And I think you ought to... You want to report it to the police. At least you have a record of what's happened, and they'll, they'll instruct you how to record things, how to keep a track. So if you ever do need to get control of it, you'll be able to. Do you ever talk to her on the phone? Or no, she just leave messages? She leaves messages, but then sometimes she calls, and all she does is breathe. What? All right, but what about that Star Sixty Nine thing, or whatever that is? Well, I'm 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 a college student. Can't afford I'm on that. Campus and the campus services don't offer that. Oh, really? Yeah. So this basically, not, I have no idea you know, how it's coming. It, 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 you guys may think it's cute and flattering, whatever, and, and stimulating, as you say. There. Uh, well, it's, it will? It, it's uh, titillating. It, we're talking about somebody who is not well. And uh, the, you know we don't know how not well she is. Yeah, and, uh, you're not helping her, letting her go on like this, and you may be putting yourself in some danger. What do you mean, letting her go on like this? Well, if What's she, if she she's doing? If she's psychotic and is not, you know, taking her medicines or not getting appropriate help, that sort of thing. I mean, it's not right. All right. <laughs> what happened to my voice, Dan? Yeah. Hey, you're on Love Line. Wow, this is awesome. Oh, Good. I'm on, I'm on uh, air. Okay. Yes. 
I had a few things. Mm -hmm. A few things. One, I want to hear more Anne. Yeah, all right. She's a really pretty voice. She's great. She does, yes. Yes. Um, other than that, I was wondering, Dr. Drew, about uh, I wanted the orthodontist today. Yeah. And I was, I used, uh, they put me on under with uh, nitrous oxide. Right. And I was like really euphoric. You liked it, huh? Yeah, that was pretty crazy. So I was wondering <laughs> about that. Like, could you just give me a rundown? Uh, what is it you're concerned with? Could you have had some problem with that as a result of... I think he wants to know where to get it. Yeah, what, what are you asking, Dad? What are you asking? I was just wondering, just in general, like, what it was and what it did. And, and if uh, any... It's an anesthetic. Uh, uh, how it causes euphoria, whether it has addictive potential or somewhat of a mystery. My concern with it is that, uh, you know, they had you on careful monitors, right? Huh? They were monitoring you carefully on this stuff, right? Oh, I think so. Right. And I don't know. you got to remember I was, that... I was like... They would, speak, they would have to say things like four times over. Well, people, people. And they lowered the dosage. They lowered the intake. <laughs> people are taking this stuff in somebody's living room, and uh, you, there, there are complications of this anesthetic. You can have heart disturbances, rhythm disturbances, whatnot. My concern is with more with people, the, people falling down, people having these these sudden death experiences while they're using it in, in an uncontrolled environment, and if they use it a lot, there are certain disorders of thought that can occur, and the uh, more dreaded complications and neuropathy. All right, right, all right, enough of that. Look, right, just say it's word, bad. Just it. say it's bad. It's not good for you. It's, it's not good. Right. Okay, but the thing is, I had someone email me the other day. Remember, you're talking about getting it. At uh, auto par parts yeah. or auto supply yeah. places, nitrous oxide, like guys yes. putting their hot rods. Yes. They said that the company denatures it like they do to alcohol, uh, like rubbing alcohol, so it cannot be consumable. All I know is I, I talk to groups of addicts at least twice a week, and this is a week ago Tuesday. I was giving a presentation. I was talking about nitrous, and they started talking about going to car parts stores, oh. I, and I didn't know what they were talking about. And they said, oh, yeah, we go there, we load up a balloon or, like, a big punching bag balloon right, right out of the back of the car parts, you know, place, and that's where they get it. All right. Well, maybe. And, they're, 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 and it's so-called all the guys know what's what they're going to use it for at the car parts store. you got to do it the way I used to do it in the 60s. I'd come home, early 70s, I'd come home with... Uh, from the market with bottles of ready whip, ready whip, right. carried very carefully so right. that it didn't move. And I always took the ones from the back, sh you know, the back of the shelf, because <laughs> sure. you know they weren't touched. And I'd get home and just kind of. This is the voice of Warren Cucurillo, yeah. guitarist extraordinaire, and nitrous oxide. Without fame. nitrous, yeah. yeah. And a lot of people, I've been off nitrous for a long time now. A lot of people just go to the stores, go right into the cold section of the Seven Eleven or wherever, slide the thing open, put the thing in their mouth. Seriously? Yeah, just pop the tab and suck it off. It'll come. Well, I don't know if I want to give blueprints to get loaded. How do you but know so much about this? Uh, hey, I have it doesn't. This one friend. It doesn't last long, and you know it's it's going to kill you anyway. You yeah, know, because you never know what kind of reaction you're going to have. You know, your heart could explode or something. Let's talk about more important things, Warren. Let's talk about your new CD. You want to talk about my CD? Thanks to. Well, thanks to just Frank. because there's some um, sexual references on some of the songs. Yes, we do. Can you give a few of the uh, well, titles? Well, I'll just tell you. When you have music like this that has no no words, right? And you think you think about it in a performance situation, you might want to send some messages to some of the young ladies in the audience. So if you just say the name of this song is Orgasmatron, right? At least they'll have some kind of picture in their mind about it without the words. They'll just be able to kind of fantasize what the right. song is about. Like you wouldn't want to call a song Grandpa's Underwear. Exactly. <laughs> but you might want to call the song Room 1015 at the Holiday Inn right. downtown, you know. So you, got, you have uh, one called Ass Man. <laughs> one called Ass Man. I'm right. guessing you're talking about a woman's ass. Yes, I am. Okay. Because, Just want to make uh, that clear? Well, as opposed to being I think there's a lot of ass men out there. Are we allowed to say that, Mike? Yeah, we are. <laughs> Good, because I'm a tit man. You're a tit man. Oh, yeah. Are I'm you? an ass man. Are you? Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but is it is it and I'm also an ass man. I mean, I enjoy the ass as well. Right. I mean, I don't want to See, but I think the ass when you're an ass oh, man. I can't. <laughs> oh, I can't. You can't say oh, okay. you enjoy tits Hold on, on the air. No, no. I think uh, producer Ann just said we can't say the T word. All right, let's not say the T. You know what's funny? But though? you know, you know the good thing about what? ass men. I think when you're a real ass man. And you see one that's beautiful, mm -hmm. but the face ain't that good. It right. automatically gives more points to the face. So it's like if a oh, face is a, is a five and the ass is a ten, that makes the, the face then becomes a seven. Right, right, because you carry the two. Exactly. It's, it'd technically be like a seven and a half. I mean, if the ass is a ten and the face is a five, you really should just give a yeah. seven and a half. Yeah. All right, but this song's this album's all instrumental. All instrumental. Is this your first uh, all instrumental? It's my first solo ever. record. That I've ever done, you know, like 18 years on, I'm, 
you know. It's thanks to Frank Frank Zappa? Yes. Because he was such an influence because on Because he gave me my start. You know, if it wasn't for him, I'd be, you know. What kind a of radio guy? chat show host or something? What Who kind knows? Of guy a was a truck he? driver. Tell us, tell us a little about Frank. Well, obviously, everybody knows a little about Frank. He was the guy who made music for himself and for his core fans, and he, you know, he never really conformed to anything as far as, you know, radio programming or he didn't. He never really fit into any category. And if he, you know, if one of his, like someone in his band had an unusual story of something that happened the night before on the road, most likely would become a song three weeks later. And but tell us something about Frank that no one knows. I mean that that only someone close to him would know. Well, being around him, and first of all, I was a big fan before I got in his band. I was following his music for about f five years before I actually got an audition with him. But I just think he's the hardest working, funniest, um, most dedicated, you know, guy around. You know, or was the most dedicated, you know, hard working person. And, and had a song very co funny. Coincidentally, called. Uh, Tea. <laughs> tea, tea and tea and beer and beer, right? So well, teas, uh, teas and beer. We don't want to get to that. We don't want to get into more trouble again. I don't see why you can't say that word because it's like the part of a cow. The the I didn't make it up. The part of the cow. Am I right, Drew? Do you know why you can't say it? Why? Because George Carlin made up some words out of off the top of his head. Seven that Congress mm. used as the blueprint for what they decided to be. Unacceptable. Oh, that was it? That was it. He, but they, ass wasn't one of them. That was not one of them. Ass, 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 yeah. ass. Let's do it. God, he didn't put that on there. Scott. Yes. You're on Love Line with Warren Cucurillo. That's great. Um, Dr. Drew. Scott. Um, the nitrous oxide use. Yeah. I work in a high performance auto parts store in Maryland. Right. Tell me about it. And the nitrous oxide that we get is actually diluted with sulfur. Huh. So it is not safe for inhaling. Do they could they be doing something to it to make it say I mean, again I I don't use this I'm only reported you know, this stuff is reported to me by people that use it I mean you're a, have a lot. To... I was in front of about 50 people and at least 15 of them said that's where they got nitrous from routinely and that you know wow. sulfur so this it, is in so California it stinks, right it smells like a fart when you open it up right well not it doesn't really have the smell to it mm -hmm. but what we do is we get it in uh, in a 50 pound bottle. And mm -hmm. then we actually pump it into 10-pound bottles. That's the only way in the state of Maryland that we're allowed to sell it. See, I think it may be a state-specific phenomenon. Maybe in California they're a little looser for some reason. Okay. I don't um, know. I always, assume, I always assume they got it from the uh, whipped cream things, that sort of stuff, whipped yeah, cream the, canisters. The automotive grade is, is not the pure grade that you get in the dentist's office or in the doctor's office. Very good. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really have to be to a lot of people that are sort of hell-bent on getting themselves jacked up. But are they using this like people were using poppers? Is it like a sex thing, or is it just, no. just a pure let's no, get it's just get you just you you're, you just get high as a kite, and then you just tip over, mm. and it lasts about 15 seconds. It's like carbona and glue was in the 60s. Right. Uh, not nearly as dangerous as that. Oh, I know, right. but, you know, it's Vince. cheap high. Vince? Yeah. Hey, you're on Love Line. Hey, Warren. Hey, Drew. Hey, right. Adam. Hey. Hello. I've got, uh, I've got one thing. You know when, uh, when you were talking about women's orgasms and there's some of the people that come across the shooters? Yeah, and I somebody, did once. And somebody said it was urine? It can be. There's female orgasmic incontinence. It's, Thank you. If you're lucky, it would be urine. No, I think it's actually cum. I think it's there can be both. It okay. can be. It depends on the, what we're talking about here. Okay. Warren, you you've you've been slimed before. Yes, you have. Mm, I was pleasantly surprised. Really, you yeah. enjoyed that. I remember exactly where I was. I remember the color of the couch, everything. Uh huh. And <laughs> and she worked at Sushi on Sunset at the remember, time. <laughs> remember the, the color of the couch used to be. And <laughs> but let me ask you this now: Did you enjoy it because it was sort of like uh, it was different? That's why. Yeah, it was like in, in, in Japan, you're supposed to belch to say it was a good meal. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it was a sign. It was like, yes, I, no, I arrived. It was just a pleasant surprise. Yeah, it was just like that. Yeah, mm, brings back memories. Now, did it get you in the eye? No, it got me right in the chin. You were talking about uh, the dental dam when you walked in here. Mm. I just want to know where I can ago. get some dental dams. I need some. You know, when you're on tour, you gotta you got to have a good supply of all these kind of things. Drew? You can make them out of a dry condom. Yeah, but where do you, you buy just, them? You cut the tip off and then cut this, along this the This man's a rock axis. star you know, at a sex shop, right? So they basically taste the same as condoms. It's the same stuff. Okay. 
True. That's good to know. The man is a the man is a platinum rock star. He doesn't <laughs> have time to be sitting around with the scissors Scissoring. experimenting on condoms. It's like with Christ my sake. vitamins. If they're not vegan capsules, I have to like take them out and you know open the capsule up. You know, take right? If there's if stuff. there's pimento in the pimento loaf backstage, you trash the whole green room. <laughs> you don't have time to be experimenting with the, like he's some camper in arts and crafts. And we'll be back. Huh? Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> what do you do, Q? Oh, I don't know. I, I was jamming. I like this song. I was waiting on you. Anyway, let me get the phone numbers out for a little, 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 little line. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. 1-800-568-3191. The fax number, 310-854-4455. We're here with Dr. Drew and Warren Cucurillo from Duran Duran and many other musical ventures. His new album, uh, Thanks to Frank, came out yesterday. So uh, we're going to be playing a cutoff of that in about 15 or 20 minutes. So you want to stay tuned for that. Until then, and Warren, you're going to have to uh, bear with me here because for the last few nights, I decided to sort of give a standardized test to figure out if people are homosexual, uh, gay men, gay women, mm -hmm. heterosexual women, heterosexual men. Something uh, that people could write down, tabulate the points, and come up with a definitive answer on whether You're they were gay. And what do they win? Gay or not. Well, they win their own sexual proclivity is basically. <laughs> so just satisfaction and peace of mind. So grab a pad and pencil because tonight we'll be doing the what test? The women's heterosexual aptitude test. And here we go. If you've ever made a collage out of clippings from women's magazines, give yourself five points. Chicks love that. They cut all this stuff out from Vogue. They stick it up on the wall. Guy would never do that, and a lesbian would never do that. Give yourself a point for every time you faked an orgasm. Add an additional five points if you did it while performing oral sex. Now that's a giver. And 25 points if you faked the orgasm while your man was in the bathroom. If you own culottes, give yourself 10 points. If you've ever gone out in cowboy boots and cycling shorts, and I know you have, give yourself 10 points. Give yourself five points for every time you've uttered the words, right now, I just need to be held. If you think it's all right to punch your boyfriend while he's sleeping because you had a dream he hit on one of your friends, give yourself 10 points. There's a female thing to do. Give yourself five, oh, sorry, give yourself 15 points if every time you get together with one or more of your friends, the conversation quickly turns to menstruation. How many points for that one? 15. Right on. And you know you do it. Anytime more than two girls get together, it goes right to the crotch. Add 20 points if you secretly wish all other women would magically gain 40 pounds, <laughs> thus making you appear that much thinner. And... Mark yourself down. Uh, that's a 40-pointer, Ann. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. 40 pounds, 20 points. Yes. Give yourself three points for every stuffed animal you own, five points for each one you've named, and 20 points for each one you've had an intimate relationship with. You want to put that in a washer when you're done. Give yourself five points for every time you've sworn up and down you don't masturbate. And oh no, and, I'm all over and that. take take fifteen off for that because you Shut said up. it on the freaking radio. Three points if you don't know how many cylinders your car has. And straight six, I'm guessing in that baby. Add another five points if you're not sure what a cylinder is. Give yourself five points for every workout video you've purchased. Add five points if you've never worked out to any of them, and add fifteen points if the only one who works out to them is your husband. Give yourself three points if you've ever put unicorn decals on your fingernails. Lesbian would never do that. And not even the little Pegasus horse? Never. Not even in high school. Okay. Nope. If you've ever taped Days of Our Lives, Beverly Hills 90210, Melrose Place, or Savannah, add five points. If you've taped this old house, deduct 15 points. If you have big hair, give yourself five points. No, not you, Anne. And finally, if you've ever faked an injury to get out of sex... Give yourself 25 points. What kind of injury? I'm not saying you put a sword through your your, like your spleen or something. Or yeah, yeah. Well, you, you kick the side of the bed and your shin's bruised up or something. You got a cramp? Cramp. Cramp and is good, right. You've gone the cramp route? Oh, yeah. And the headache route? No headache, actually. That's too no, easy. No, hey, but you've gone the cramp route yeah. when you didn't have cramps. Okay, yeah, that's faking an injury. Tonight. That's 25 that's, points. All right. And that's more than we need to know, Ann. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. The what test. 
<laughs> Excellent. Warren, you, you down with that? Yeah, I think that was very good. Thank you. Ready to get back to the phones? Jeff? Yes. You're on Loveline. How you doing, Adam? How you doing, Dr. Drew? Hey, Jeff. Say hi to Warren. Hi, Warren. How you doing, man? I have a question. Let's hear it. Oh, okay. Um, since October, I have this problem. Well, not really a problem anymore, but um, I had been sleeping with this girl since October, and then I met somebody else and slept with her. Well, it ends up the person I had been sleeping with since October had ended up with chlamydia. From, she, that she already had had, or she contracted no, it? No, she, she had had it five years ago, mm. but she has never had it since, and she's been sleeping with me. I've been sleeping with her and only her. Well, she's been sleeping with me and only me since October. As far as you know. It, yeah, as far as she knows. Can chlamydia go into remission, Doc? It, it can, actually. You can carry it, and and it can kind of sort of resurface. But that's very unusual, and certainly for not... I've never heard of it or seen it for that period of time. What are the signs? Uh, well, as I check. Well, for a man or woman. I mean, For a man. Man hurts when you pee, primarily. Yeah, so that's Get a discharge. Nothing. Universal... Uh, you know, warning sign. Right. Anytime something hurts, you know yeah, that was one of the pee. songs we did on Joe's Garage. Why does it hurt when I pee? <laughs> <laughs> well, now see, I've, I've I've slept with I've slept with three different women since oh January. Uh huh. And one I used a condom on, and they've all been tested. Now right. one got tested and said she had the results back the, the same day. <laughs> Is that is that a lie? Well, I well, mean, she <laughs> she may have been her physician may have told her that she's probably clear and not and chose not to do a culture or something like that. Maybe she got tested for polio or something. <laughs> Maybe she just took a Polaroid of you to the doctor and said you better get these results back today. I don't know. She's got Kaiser. I know you guys have that down there. Yeah, but culture. I mean, the cultures take about a. You know, we have five yeah days. Kaiser Permanente, which is the well, stupidest wait. name ever because it's like. Permanente for a hospital. You go in, it's permanent. You're not coming out. You know, it's in a England, name. in England, you have to have um, an AIDS test to get a mortgage. And Nick just bought a new place, and uh, they do a breath test there. They don't really? Take, they don't do it with blood. Wait a minute. You have to have a, you, you have chlamydia. To, no, for uh, for AIDS. You have to get an AIDS test for to HIV. get a mortgage. Yeah. So Nick chlamydia, Rhodes, you can buy a house. It's Nick, no problem. Nick Rhodes from Duran Duran just bought. Probably a castle there. I'm guessing it wasn't no, like a trailer home a very, or something. Very nice uh, flat. Very nice. Flat. A nice flat, and he had to get an AIDS test. You have to to get a mortgage. Yeah. Really? It's amazing. I didn't know that. That that sounds kind of. Um, it's for the insurance purposes. Intrusive. Oh, I see. Because you're going to be paying for thirty years. Exactly. Okay. And you have to pay uh, life insurance. All right. In that case, it makes sense. But Jeff, what is your ultimate question? I'm just trying to figure out who I should trust. I mean. Uh. I've got one person. They both are saying they don't have it. And you have it for sure? No, I never. They just gave me some. I took four pills once, and that was it. Yeah, mm. but th that's that's not just for chlamydia, though. I mean, you took Zithromax, what you took. Azithromycin. The, uh, no, it was some new thing. Yeah, Zithromax. Oh, I don't know. I took four pills, and right. they said you're done. And and That's that's, re that's really good for all the causes of infectious, sexually transmitted disease of the urethra and males. Other than, uh, other than, uh, excuse me, gonorrhea. Is it like penicillin of the nineties? Mm, it's, it's more like closer to erythromycin, but it covers just about everything. No, I was going to um, say so that you can cover next. really everything now with a shot of something called rocephin and one gram of zithromycin. Oh, don't tell everyone that, Drew. Everyone's going to throw the condoms out and go out and well, bang away. Everything that's treatable with antibiotics. I mean, you can't, you can't treat hepatitis C. You can't treat HIV. You can't treat herpes. You can't treat warts. All right. So those are really the things you're trying to protect yourself. Jeff. Yes. Jeff, do you see what happens when you deceive? Well, no, I wasn't dating anyone. I mean, I, oh, okay. it, it, it happened, you know. Right. I just, I don't know. I mean, let, me, let me get this straight. You suddenly ha started having pain when you urinated. No, not at all. <laughs> well, Nothing at all. How do you know you had anything? Yeah. That's what, I don't know. No, they, never, they never drew blood. Never. How do you know you had anything? I don't know. They Why did you go to the doctor and take antibiotics? Because somebody that I had been sleeping with said they had it. Said they had it, and they got tested. All but right. doesn't mean just because they have it doesn't mean you're going to contract That's it. That's true. Yeah. Too confusing for us. Yeah. All right. But, Warren, let's talk about what we were talking about during the commercial for a second, which was a little sexual liaison you may have had. Yeah. Do you mind discussing that a little bit? No. We're not on in New York. You just came from New York. <laughs> You just came from New York, am I right? Yeah, you know, in this business, uh, it's just uh, you run into people all the time, and they're always kind of very willing to do whatever you'd like. Greatest? It always starts with a bath. Really? And then from then on, on, then on, it's like very heavy petting. They they give you a bath? 
Yeah, that's usually a good start. Because you're all sweaty from playing your heart exactly. out up Exactly, peeling on stage. the rubber off, you know. Right, because you're all up there in got neoprene. Some, exactly, and you got all that baby powder underneath that gets caked up on you. You hear that? He puts the talc on. You have to. Warren, I'll tell you, I, I, I dump like a vat of, of uh, baby powder down my trunks before I leave the house every day. <laughs> I never put it down my trunks. Every, do, every day. I'm telling you, that's where really? you got to put it. You just dump. I, I, Ooh, when I, when it I, cakes up, though, you know. It's it like... cakes up when you're really working a sweat, but think what the <laughs> alternative would be. Better better cake than just some of your... Hey, we like that male aroma, though, you know. It's good. It yeah, gets we them like going. it, but they don't like no, it. No, they like it. Oh, they, they subliminally, like, oh. subliminally, they just they, they come to you. Yeah, you know what? It was because you're in a band. You could pass that's... wind on them, and they'd be going, oh. <laughs> Oh, you're turning me on, Warren. <laughs> but uh, you're yeah, I, I, I was in need of a dental dam, but before I would say within the hour. Because you met a li- you met a little Asian girl. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, anyway, mm. we're so pathetic. Warren goes <clears throat> during the commercial. He goes, oh, I'll tell you, you know what it's like with a with an Asian girl, and I'm like, uh. Duh. Uh, duh. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> True. What about you? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> and so it's, it's a shame. I, the, I try to get her here. How the parts are a little bit different, right? Yeah. Well, the hair is is very different, and and the color of the parts are different, and the skin's uh-huh. very light, and the parts are, are, are uh-huh. considerably just, darker. There's a little Fu Manchu down there. <laughs> No, I just have beautiful kind of straight wispy mm. hair and, and yeah. Yeah. very little very little hair around. Where the, are you guys going? The back. Where are you guys going? Hey, what? Hey, hey, hey. what? I don't know. No. I'm following Adam. Yeah, just you know? get out of this <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we've got a real doctor here, you yeah. know, and he's probably thinking, God, keep this guy away from me. He's probably got something. No, he doesn't think that. Um, he's He's got a woody going on underneath the no, desk. I, Just like, you know, let me tell you something about Dr. Drew. He may be a doctor, but you know what he is first and foremost? He he's likes, a man. And he likes to watch. He's a man he likes like to every listen. other man. He likes to listen. <laughs> <laughs> and he likes to poke stuff in the butt with his finger, too. And, and we'll be back right after this. Yes, indeed. Let me give the phone number out for Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. 1-800-568-3191. The fax number, 310. Simmer down, Drew. 854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He's Dr. Drew. And our special guest tonight, Warren Cucurillo. You know him from Duran Duran, from Missing Persons, from Frank Zappa. From uh, oh, from uh, Michael Jackson, I mentioned earlier, doing uh, some session work with him. Yeah, I did a lot of work um, here in Los Angeles with him. On his last album. On the last, that was it was for those sessions, but it was at the tail end of it, and I did three hours of guitar tracks on blank tape, just playing like my kind of ambience and some strange guitar stuff, and none of it was used because it was like like I said, late days at, at that point for the last one. But hopefully, some of the did you stuff. get a chance to meet with oh, him? Oh yeah, and he was really nice. Yeah, he came in. I showed him how I have like sixty-seven inches of pedals that I use, and I was showing him how you know, all right, he knows how to dance. I said, but check this out, and I was like showing how I, you know, make the rounds around these things to, to get all these kind of interesting sounds. Oh, you effects. mean like the, I'll go for that? Like I don't, I play the air guitar, I don't play the real guitar, but I play it real well, and I'll go for the pedal. Sometimes that's a good too, idea. Well, if you, if you were an air guitarist who was kind of emulating me, you'd be looking down a lot and moving your legs. And do you bring that? How many pedals do you bring out when you're doing a live show? Uh, I, like I said, I have sixty-seven inches of, of pedals. How many pedals does that work out? How many? How many inches in a pedal? Like five feet, pedal. Yeah, I know how many. All right, you I know, know how many inches are in it. No, well, because they're, they're, inches, right? th- there's a rack, you know, that's got all the stuff in it, and then it's remotely controlled by these pedals that have all these different switches on it or actual foot volume type pedals. Now, do you have to switch around guitars a lot? No. Like when you're playing like gu- a lot of guys do? No, I use one guitar, and then I just use the pedals to change the sounds. So we're going to be playing Orgasmatron soon enough. Mm, but until good sounds then, on that. Until then, we're going back to the phones. Tony. Uh, yeah, hey, how's it going? Uh, good. Mr. Drew, Adam, <laughs> Warren. Great, man. Uh, good. Uh, I kind of had a, well, I don't know, man, I need some advice. Uh, recently with my girlfriend, I mean, I went over to her house after work one day, and, uh, you know, as usual, you know, it's, uh, I don't get to see her that much, so when I do, you know, I just like to, you know, we have sex, you know, we have a good time. 
some reason, I don't know what the problem is, she wants to talk about it before we have sex and everything. So I'm kind of getting frustrated. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Speak into the part of the phone that is nearest to the cord. You, you understand? Yeah, nearest to my mouth. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. You, get, you hear me better now? Yes. It's like the whole house is asleep. It's uh, over in D.C. It's like 2 in the morning. Okay. Sorry well, about that. You in your bedroom? Huh? You in the bedroom? I'm on my bed, man. All right, put the comforter over your head and make yourself a little, little tent. Man. <laughs> All right, man. How come you never see your girlfriend that much? No, nah, but see, I work too much, man. But uh, I don't know, man. Anyway, so I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I go to her house, you know, we're sitting there chilling on the couch, and I want to have sex, you know. I'm, I mean, I barely ever get to see her when I do, you know. It's time to, you know. But she wants to talk, so I'm understanding, you know. I'll talk to you, try and work out if there's a problem or anything. Uh, Tony, Yeah. quick medical question. Are you on a respirator? No, I got asthma, though. Oh, is that what that is? Man, y'all are making the noises. No, no, no. Making the noise? There's a strange noise coming from your Like head. somebody else picked up the phone. Tony, again. there's someone in the house. No. uh Okay. All right, man. All right. So anyway, I'm sitting on the couch. Frustrated. Sex, and she's, I don't know, she's playing games or something. She doesn't want to do it. She wants to talk. So I said, all right, talk. She's talking, wasting my time. I don't know. I got pissed. I overreacted. I don't know what, but... She's like, well, I don't want to have sex with you. So I said, all right, fine. So I kind of just, uh, you know, I just started masturbating in front of her. You know, you know, I mean, to me, it's no big deal. But what was the talk about? She just wants to talk about how we don't do enough together and I don't see you as much. I don't get to spend time with you. I mean. Well, it sounds like she's got a, a valid kind of reason to, you know, start, start discussing something with you, don't you think? Man, I mean. Hi, I've been Everybody working for two weeks. Me. Sorry I didn't see you, but here. Here it is. Remember him? I can see Tony with his pants around his ankles, <laughs> feverishly going away, going, no, no, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> exactly. Like she hasn't seen it before. I mean, so it's different. She doesn't want to give it to me. That's fine, you know? Say that. No, no, you I'm cannot impressed. say that. And Tony, so you really showed her. I'm saying, I don't know, what, what should I do? Now she's telling everybody what I did. All right, All right, did, did, did she join in while you were doing it? Oh, she was kind of trying to pull my hands away and trying no. to... No, Tony, listen to me. Here's the first thing you have to do. What? Put a slip cover on the sofa, for Christ's sake. Your parents <laughs> put on that thing. You're, you don't want your grandma coming over and sitting on the same <laughs> sofa you're going to town on, do you? It was her couch, Rick. Oh, okay. All right, put a sheet down then. Uh, next thing... You, you know, and Warren, you'll back me up on this. You don't. You're you're a rock star, and you don't need to make the small talk. But you remember a day before you were a rock star when you had to actually speak a little English in order to have sex. Yeah. You have to pretend like the sex just sort of happened. It was a manifestation of the fine wine and conversation. Especially if you're trying to have a, a serious relationship with someone, you know. Uh, you got to make her feel wanted. If you know, maybe you guys won't. Let, how long have you been together? We're about a year now. Do you think it'll last much longer? I mean, it's for me. It's like this. I mean, I know she needs somebody to be with, and I need somebody to be with. I don't plan to marry her or anything, but I mean, I expect some understanding. She knows I work a lot, and I try to see her as much as I can. But you know, she knows. She also knows I need sex just as much as she does. No, Tony, just, just, just stay away from that. My no. Tony, no, no, no. Don't tell yourself that. Oh, I mean. Uh, the, tell yourself what she needs is some kind of emotional reassurance and connection with you, and she really couldn't care less about the physical part. That comes with the other stuff. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and until you recognize that, you're not going to get the physical part. Yeah. Tony, you better do a little talking, because right now you're, you're paying for dinner and then going home and whacking off. If you carry on like this, you're going to wind up on Oprah in a year. Well, I mean, it's not like I don't do it anyway. I'm just saying she's telling all my friends now, you know, that this is what happened. <laughs> and I mean... Uh-oh, uh -oh, there goes the rep. <laughs> Mom raised a sensitive guy there. Tony will not get that Harvard scholarship if they find out about this. Uh, <laughs> now, look at it from her side, Tony. Come on. Look at it from her side, and then you you might be feeling a lot better. Uh, guys, they just don't want to make but the he, smallest but investment. Is he not a great example of what I've said over and over again? Stop if, whacking off on the sofa. If you're a 16 year old or it's a 19 year old girl, you know somewhere in that range, and uh, you know you're wondering what the guys are thinking. Tony's a great example of of how they see sex, and women don't see it that way. Mm. He is.
Yeah, all right. <laughs> Just because I didn't have a snappy retort doesn't mean you were wrong, Drew. Relax. All right. All right, now. I'll take the calls that I'm suggesting we're you not, take. Oh, I don't know. You didn't point at anything. I just oh, okay. Did. All right. Relax over there. I'm having an off night, all right? I'm entitled. <laughs> hey, I had a great night last night, Warren. You, uh, you re- sound pretty on You really tonight. should have been here. <laughs> now I answer you all that. I had a great night last night, too. I know. You needed the dental dam because you got a little of that geisha love. But. We're going to play a cut off of uh, Thanks to Frank, and we'll be back. Uh, we're back here on Love Line, 1 800 L O V E 191, 1 800 568 3191, fax number 310 854 4455. We have a fax. Oh, we're here with Dr. Drew and Warren Cucurilla from Duran Duran. And many other projects. Uh, Dearest Warren, ass man extraordinaire. Hi, we love you. We're huge fans of yours, and we love Duran Duran, too. We really admire your work and wish you luck on all your future endeavors. And, <clears throat> oh, and give uh, Claudia and Mako our Michael. best. Yeah, that's Michael? my boy and my wife, yeah. Oh, really? We live in Brazil. We live in Rio. <sighs> <laughs> oh. What a life you have. Nicole L. and Maggie S. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, well, wait a minute. You're married? Uh, we've been together for nine years. Not, I'm not officially married, no, but, you know, uh, it's as far as uh, uh-huh. the commitment goes, yeah, we're married. Uh huh. But what about that geisha girl you were committed to? Ah, last that was night? just a story I made up. You know, this is love lines. I just thought I'd throw something in and in make it a little bit more saucy, you know. In case she wants a tape of the show. <laughs> uh, P.S. Are you going to play any live shows in L.A. besides the Tower on Sunset, which will be at 1 p.m.? And you'll be performing and uh, signing, and that'll be Friday. Right. Yeah, but we're going to do the, this place called the Velvet Room Saturday night because I thought there's no way I'm going to come here and just play an in-store. I want to do a, a gig at night, and I like going on around midnight, so I'm going to do an 11.30 set at and, the Velvet. And uh, in Hollywood, and that'll be around midnight. So that's where you can find them, at the Velvet Room and uh, on the tower, Sunset Tower at uh, 1 o'clock on Friday. What am I doing here? I'm all over the place. Drew? You need to take a 10-second break in a few minutes. Oh, I do. Mm, I think we get a quick call in. All right. How about six? Yeah. Okay. Michelle? Hi. You have Hi. a question for Warren? Yeah, actually, I do. Um, I just wanted to call and tell you that I love Duran Duran. Me too. I love you guys. I have loved you guys since you guys first came out. Mm-hmm. And um, I was wondering when your album will be out, your new one. Is um, you going to have a new one coming out soon? Well, we are going to have one. It's going to be out in October. It, and it's called Medaz- Medazzaland. And are you guys going to go on tour soon? It would be early 97. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Adam, I want to tell you, you are so funny. He uh-huh. is. He is funny. <laughs> Thank you, Warren. You're Thank- a Gemini, right? Yeah, I am. I am, too. How the hell do you know that? Oh, I was talking about it? Yeah. <laughs> That's how you know. I well, would love to sit in on one of your shows. Well, you could sit on one of our shows if you like. Really? Yeah. I'm going to be down there in a week. Where are you coming from? From San Jose. All right. <laughs> I'm going to come down and bug you. Fantastic. All right. All right. See ya. Okay. Make sure and bring a weapon. Okay. All right. We'll be back in 10. Hey, oh, we're back with Warren Cougarill from Duran Duran. And let me just say this. Uh, let me make an observation about this uh, Duran Duran for a moment. Very smart idea, this Duran Duran band, because a lot of guys, they go out and they start a band like Guar. Or uh, Megadeth or something. Mm. Actually, I know that dr- I went to high school with the drummer from Megadeth, uh, Nick um, Nick Menza. But anyway, here's the deal. You get a bunch of, who comes out to the shows? A bunch of 17-year-old guys with long hair, no jobs, banging their head up against the railing all night. Now, you guys, mm. it's a lot of chicks, right? Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, there's still a lot of girls there. We got, we got a, a, a bit. Is it a 50? Because I, and, you know, it's and don't, probably, don't take this the wrong way, but I think Duran Duran is more of a girls group. <laughs> I thought that sounded bad, but what no. I mean is, is, is I know more girls who like Duran Duran and who are into Duran Duran than guys who are into Duran Duran. And maybe guys are into it and it's not something they're, they're shouting from the mountaintop or something, but it seems like. Uh, when you I think it's. I think that's like, in a state of flux, though. I, I think, um, you know, with the album that had "Ordinary World" on it, I think we got a lot more guy fans because it was just a song that that hit home with a lot of people. How did you do that? I don't know. Engineer Mike over Unbelievable. there. Unbelievable. He's he's broken himself. All right, relax over there. Uh, 
but you know, I think you, I think the the overall image that was that was put out there in the eighties, you know, with all these glamorous photos, it just appealed to the girls. They like to have those collages right. on the wall, you know. Right. It's yeah. It's not. It's not like New Kids on the Block or no, Menudo no, or some crap like that. Because it's a band that's influenced by Bowie and Roxy right, and stuff it's, like it's that. A, so, it's a good you know. band, but you do get do you get more girls at a show? Do you think? Yeah, I think it's about. Uh, it's probably about sixty forty. Right, mm. because you're going to like. A, but we know, ain't complaining. No, sixty girls. I mean, sixty percent girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. See, that's good. Forty percent fashion. So, well, so look, right. <laughs> but you have yours. to think, though, if there's that many women there, guys should go to the shows because it's probably a place where they can kind of meet girls. Yeah, you know I mean? but unless because, you look you know, like you know one of you guys. Yeah, but, so just wear them. some rubber and push everything to the right, and you'll be all right. <laughs> they, they they do that. The guys in the band they pack themselves. They just themselves. I'm not saying they stuff for an hour. No, that was a big thing in the, in the early '80s. I think. You know? But did they actually? I mean, put Lenny stuff... Kravitz is still doing it, but you know, I, it, oh, I just let it go right down the middle right now. <laughs> <laughs> Beth. Yeah. Hi. You're you're on Loveline. Hi, I have a question for the doctor. Yeah, hi, Beth. Actually, um. My best friend and I have um, been using heroin since probably January, and today we just decided we were quitting cold turkey, and we're just wondering what we're going to be in for. Uh, you know, heroin withdrawal can be treated very effectively, uh, so uh -huh. I would suggest you contact a doctor who's used to doing there has some experience with this because it, you needn't go through it. Uh, without any assistance, it, it's pretty miserable. Uh, a lot of sort of creepy skin, wanting to kind of jump out of your skin. A lot of pain in your legs and back. Uh -huh. uh, you feel you feel sweaty and uh, agitated at times. But can you do it? And I mean, yeah, can you, you do, do it, it cold turkey look, like that, or do you have to see no, somebody? Heroin withdrawal is not dangerous. It's uh -huh. miserable and it lasts about three to five days, but it is not dangerous. Uh -huh. Alcohol withdrawal, people die from that every day. Yeah. DTs has about a 60% fatality rate associated with it. But heroin withdrawal, people can go through it. And heroin withdrawal is not, it's the easiest part of dealing with heroin addiction, okay? Uh -huh. Although there's great fear of it and it's uncomfortable few days, the hard part is living your life without heroin. And I can promise you, you will not live without drugs unless you do something uh -huh. to replace it. And that wow. something is some sort of recovery program. Yeah. Uh, that the probability of relapse is 100%. I know. Okay, and unfortunately, there's no magic bullet. There's no other easier ways that you can get through this. Uh, every heroin addict wants an easier kind of way to get out, but there isn't. Uh, 1996, there's one or only one effective way of dealing with this disease. Methadone is no good anymore. Methadone mm. is a disaster. It's Meth another drug. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's another it's, addiction. And and it's it's just a long-acting opiate. And I have yet to meet a methadone addict who doesn't shoot heroin in addition, and or end up addicted to large doses of methadone and basically at some point in their life the house of cards falls and they have to get off the methadone and that is a miserable withdrawal. It takes about two months to get off methadone. Mm -hmm. uh, now methadone, there are untreatable cases. There are people that would die without the methadone and then the methadone's appropriate. All right, what would you tell Beth to do in 10 seconds? C call Narcotics Anonymous right now and you'll, yeah. get some, you'll get some support from them. They'll have some ideas for you, okay? Okay. All right. Good luck. Good luck. How come you can talk for five minutes about whatever the hell you want? He doesn't need to be sitting around. No, there. I'm concerned for people like that. I, I believe that, you know, people should live their lives straight. You know, it's just, it's... Did you ever this, dabble? Did you ever, yeah, did. ever I, you know, on look, I'm, I'm a guy who, you know, I'm, I'm from the 60s and the 70s, really. You know, I was, I was a teenager in the late 60s, and, you know, there was a lot of drugs around. But... I never did heroin, but I understand. I mean, I was pretty into alcohol and pot and stuff and it's just it's it's nowhere it just you're ruining your, your, your life christy hello hello hi hey hi how are you good good um i have a question mm -hmm. um i had a little situation this past weekend and um i have a fiance who is in the air force and he's stationed in Waxy, Mississippi, and um, I work at a house club, and an ex-boyfriend of mine, I just happened to bump into him, and um, over... And his penis just happened to slip into your <laughs> vagina? <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah. So that's the, that's the crux of it, isn't it? Well, see, I went out with him and a bunch of my friends um, on my birthday, and... 
some things led to some other things, you know. Right. And a few drinks, <laughs> a little celebrating. Yeah, and um, so I ended up sleeping with him. It, it's he, cool. Listen, Warren knows he ran into an old friend he just met last night. <laughs> <laughs> No. He knows how things can be. I know, but this is serious because, like, because... Did it renew the kind of feelings you had before for him? No. Is that what's frightening no, you, no? No, it really didn't. It was just kind of a spur of the moment kind of a thing. But then, see, my fiancé, like, flew in and it's for my birthday. No! And I was, like, asleep in bed with my ex-boyfriend. And, oh. and, but, see, the thing is, is that, I mean, I... <clears throat> Absolutely, do not want to be with my ex-boyfriend. I and I don't have any idea how I should even go about. Cause he wait, wait, did this guy walk in on you with him there? Well, we were asleep, and the guy walked in. And and he what? Yeah, because he's got a key to my apartment. And oh. he came in to surprise you. And he came in, and he had flowers and all this. Oh. Stuff. I know. And what? Did, how did he react? He went. I mean, he just went nuts. Did he go for a service revolver? <laughs> He 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 was gonna start a fight with the guy, and he was swearing at me, and he was. Just... Was was the guy nude? <laughs> no. Because he... you, you never look more foolish than getting in a fist fight naked. <laughs> I don't care what kind of man you are. I don't care what kind of build you have. When you're nude and you're getting in a fist fight, you just it just looks wrong. Yeah. No, he wasn't. All right, so he kicked the guy out. So yeah, and he left, and then and then he was. Screaming at me and and um. Do you live Do you live together when he's not stationed away? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Do you live together when he's not on the on the base? Um. Yeah. We we. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so he I was know. in his bed. Yeah. Oh, soiling his. So did he event? Did he stay that night? No, your, he did not. Your no. your boyfriend, your real boyfriend, no, ex boyfriend. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Your future ex boyfriend. <laughs> Don't say that. When did you have a, a date for the marriage? No, uh -uh, not yet. Okay. And how long have you been seeing this guy? Um, for about, um, in a month it'll be two years. Uh-huh. And you've been engaged for how long? For seven months. Okay. All right. I have your answer. Okay, but don't, okay. No, believe me, I don't, have your don't answer. Don't what? Don't, don't what? I don't want to hear. Don't be a smartass about it. No. Because <laughs> I'm seriously worried Adam, about you'll this. never get credit, will you? <laughs> I, I never will. Well, okay. let's hear this advice. Let's yeah, see what you can say. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> This guy was your old boyfriend. Yeah. And 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 your boyfriend knew you had other boyfriends before he, well, right? Yeah. I mean, your fiance knew about that. Yeah. It's basically you look at it this way. You had instead of how long did you go out with this guy before? Which which one? The the, the old boyfriend. Oh, okay. Um for about 10 months. Uh-huh. 10 months. And how many times would you estimate you had sex in that 10 months? Oh, a lot, but A lot, but give me an estimation. <laughs> Five times a month? Uh, no, no, I say five times a week, 20 times a month, um, 10 months, 200 times? <laughs> Probably six times a week. Six times a week. All right, that's going to be too hard to compute. Uh, let's say 25 <laughs> times a month. Times, 240 times. 250, 240 times. Come on. Boy, no. Dude, the guy looks good with no shirt. He plays a rock guitar, <laughs> and he's like an abacus up his ass at the same time. <laughs> Sickening. But here's the deal. So you had sex 241 times. That's <laughs> basically the angle I would work on this. Mm. Tell him one time you're sick you didn't have sex. And <laughs> mm. I mean, I think that's really your only angle. Smart ass. No, I seriously, wouldn't that no, work on you a little um, bit? You know what I think maybe? Um, you know, he's down there in Biloxi, and you don't know what he's doing. What if you both came clean and you asked him, look, haven't you kind of strayed a little bit when you're away from me and if you do come clean if you're going to get married maybe you should just let's you know call it evens because maybe he is hiding something from you maybe it only happened once down there with him so warren's saying dig up a little dirt on him i don't know what does the doctor think i mean it's We're, it's a funny situation how did how did uh, he leave it how, um when he came home when he came that night yeah um he just said that that he's like I, I can't believe you could do this to me and he's like I, I can't talk to you about this right now he's like I'm so angry with you and he said I, I have to go and he just grabbed his stuff and he le he walked out so you don't know what he's thinking now no I don't how long ago was this Saturday have you tried contacting him since yeah I have and and, and uh, um I got through to him actually he called me back one time and. He said, I'm, I'm not putting this off, but I'm not ready to discuss this with you yet. All right, Christy, he may not be ready to talk to you, but I think he's going to be ready to talk to me. What's that? He's, he's ready to talk to me, Warren, and Dr. Drew. That's good. 
I'm telling you, how out of control can I get bookend by these two guys? <laughs> we will get to the bottom of this. But you know what? What? He's up in Duluth, Minnesota, snowmobiling at a friend's cabin. Hmm. <laughs> well, we gotta, have, we'll, have, have, a, a we'll have a talk with him. Do you have we'll a have phone it. number there? I don't. That's the thing. I don't have. I don't have the phone number. Mm, uh, all right. I guess I believe you. I, I. I. I'll tell you the truth. I know it sounded like I was kidding, but if my fiance was going to fool around with someone, I would rather her fool around with someone who she already fooled around with because it's not like she's adding another man onto the list. Right, right. It's I not agree like with she that. hasn't already been with the right. guy. It, it does, I agree it, with that. It doesn't, it doesn't break. But uh, it, that doesn't, because I can't just say, well, you know, I've been with him before, therefore, I mean, that's right. not It's a boundary okay. that's already down, and she, and she did happen mm-hmm. to bump into the guy. However, it really strikes to the heart of trust issues in a relationship. And right. if, she, if he has right. anything going on with that, it's probably over. All yeah. right. But I w- you could try to work this one. What if you were out? What if I was out of town? What if you were drunk? What if you were celebrating? What if you ran into one of your old girlfriends and she pushed herself on you? Tell me that you couldn't have slipped up and done the same thing I did. Maybe that'll work. If he's a man, he'll... He'll yeah, admit that that was a possibility. But that trust thing is, it's, I, I, that happened to me once. Oh. And I could never get, and we res- we resolved it. But you couldn't get past it, really. No, yeah. it, it ruined it. We, yeah. we, we went on for about another four months, but it was yeah. never the same. Yeah. And I was very because, in love because with Because there, there, are, there are defenses that kick in to protect you from being hurt. And, mm. they, and they're not rational defenses. They're very deep sometimes. And they prevent yeah. you from being vulnerable and open in the same way that you would have been. Could you have trusted the person? It but, would be great if he could forgive you. Was it, you know? w- Warren, but was it that you couldn't ever trust her or was that you just were angered so much that you could never forgive her? You know what I mean? I just thought it could never happen. And and see, my and it was, wasn't nowhere near as severe as what happened to this girl. If, if somebody did that to me and they swore up and down they'd never do it again and they cried and begged for forgiveness, I would think that they wouldn't do it again. But the problem would be is I would be pissed off. For, like, the rest of eternity. So it wouldn't be, like, a trust issue. It would just be me being angry yeah. all the time. Well, it depends on the personality of the, of the, of the all person. Right, but that's, you, know? you didn't catch him in bed, though, did you? No, no, no. Oh, okay, good, just, because... Uh, she would... didn't even have sex with the person. It was just... Uh, oh, well, she just well, went off with Mr. somebody. No, it was a there. very strange thing, and it, and, it, and, it, and it pissed me off. It did piss me off, but I just thought... How could she do that to me? You know, I was like 17 But she didn't have sex with no, you. No, no. It was just, but it was just a, it was a very bad night for me. And I just thought, this is someone I love. She's really hurting me. How could she do that? And then we resolved it, but it was just, but it, it was, was kind of over. It was never really resolved. You know? Carol. Yeah. Um, You're on Loveline. Yeah. Dr. Drew? Yeah, okay. Well, um, my problem is, like, that my sister, like, whenever I'll be, like, um, making out with, like, my boyfriend, she'll, like, walk through and start flirting with him, and it's, like, so obvious that she does. I mean, I'll, like, say to him, I'll be like, do you think that she's, like, flirting with you? And he'll be like, oh, no, she's not. But she'll walk through, like, one time she walked through in her underwear and her bra, and she's like, oh, I didn't know he was here. It's like, I just told you he was, you know? All right. So how old's your sister? 18. And you're 16? Yeah. Okay. She's got the hots for your boyfriend. Yeah. Or she hates your guts. (laughs) <laughs> it could be a little each. Yeah, I guess. I don't think that she hates me, though. I mean, I hate her, but... Yeah? Is she there? No, she's not here now. She's, like, out at a party getting drunk. Is she, she over at uh, Frederick's of Hollywood loading up on gear for the next time your boyfriend comes yeah. over? So, like, she'll wear, like... like some, one time she put on this, like, black lingerie, and she wore this for him. Uh-huh. I mean, not for him, but she, like, came around walking, uh, like, wearing this. And then, like, when he left, she put on this, like, long white nightgown with, like, Tweety, um, like, Tweety Bird on the front. Yeah. Now, you weren't upset that your boyfriend stuffed a couple of uh, singles into her crotch when she walked by? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was. So, I mean, I'm saying to him, I'm like... And, and, I mean, it looks like he's, like, um, like sometimes trying to flirt with her, too. And I'll be like, you know... Are you, like, flirting with her? And he'll be like, oh, no, you know, she's just being nice to me. It's, like, not really being nice. Have you talked to her about this? Uh, yeah, I'm like, um, are you, like, flirting with my boyfriend or something? And then she's always like, what are you talking about? Why would I flirt with your boyfriend? And I'm like, well, you know. I said, well, are you? And then she's always just like, why would I flirt with him? He's like, oh. she says, like, he's ugly and stuff, but he's not. And... Well, it doesn't always mean something. I mean, Warren and I, Warren and I were talking during the commercial, and Drew walked by in his underwear. And I think it was just because it was hot in here, right? Drew, you didn't mean anything by it sexually. You're trying to get me away from Warren? If I find you stealing my underwear again. Here's what's going to happen. This is not acceptable. <laughs> it's like, I mean, 
<laughs> to go out and buy lingerie, just like wear when he's around. It's like she'll spend like a hundred dollars just on lingerie. I, I would take this not so much that she wanted your boyfriend, but that she has a little bit in for you. And that she has a little, a little anger toward you, or a little unresolved business with you, and she's she's basically screwing or, with or, you, or with herself. I mean, if she really has low self esteem, I don't think of... she does because she's like got all these friends, and she's had like all these boyfriends. Yeah, but she really, so. I mean, you she, never she, know what's inside yeah, of somebody. She may really need that. She may feel very empty on the inside, and this is just a continue away. She can't tolerate anybody else getting attention other than her, mm. even when it's you. I don't know. It's strange for the, she's the older sister, right? It's strange for the yeah. older one to be like that. Mm, not really. In no? terms of you know, the, the oldest child has more actually psychological problems than, than anyone in the family picking I, order. I'm the oldest. Yeah, well, she has problems. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you for that testimonial, Warren. <laughs> well, Carol, I would just have a talk with her. And here's what here's the way to do it. Don't pull her aside and start yelling at her. Don't start accusing her. Don't say, I know, oh, come on, and all that, because she's going to get defensive, then she's going to get combative, and you're never going to get anything out of it. Yeah, I shouldn't set her bed on fire or anything. Right, no. right. My friends recommend that. No, no. Just, That's probably mean. no, just shave her head while she's sleeping. No, just talk to her. And say, you know, I, I noticed you came by, and it happened more than once, and it made me uncomfortable, and uh, I, I, I wish you'd be a little more uh, conscientious. Yeah. Conscientious? <laughs> conscientious. <laughs> you can tell her if she could, like, go stay in the garage until he's gone or something. Uh, All right, Carol. Okay, I'll keep the motor running. Okay. Drew, you got a call you like? Tough. I'm going to this one. Patrick. Hello. Hello, Adam. Hello, Dr. Drew. Hello, yeah. Warren. Hi. Patrick. Hi. I'm, uh, um, I... Just became a really big Frank Zappa fan. Oh, congratulations. There's a lot to listen to. Yeah. And uh, I just started about a year ago, and my neighbor is tutoring me. He's loved it all his life. Tutoring me. You know, you're talking about 70 records over, wow. over like 25 years. A lot wow. of stuff. Joe's Garage absolutely mm -hmm. is the best. Yeah, I love that. And they mention a Warren in there a couple times. A uh, lot. Go to a party with Warren. Of course, I introduce you to Warren and Catholic Boys, Warren Cucurillo. Yep. That's right. the Warren. You're the Warren. That's me. How long have you been with uh, Frank Zapp at that point? I, I spent about a year and a half, or a year with him. But I was a fan for years before that, and I, I'd been friends with him for a couple of years before I got in his band. Pa Patrick? Yeah. Pat, you ever read the Bible? Sometimes. I'm the Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could uh, tell everybody that... Joe's Garage is absolutely the greatest album in the world. I kind of became addicted to it for like three months. I listened to it every day. Is it out on CD? Yeah, it is. is, it is. Uh, I'm guessing that Ryko there's Disc a... Disc uh, has just put out all the Zappa records. Is there a big box set, uh, Frank Zappa box set There's and all no that? box set yet. There, there isn't? No. You'd How really think there would be. It'd be a big box. <laughs> Cost a fortune. did Warren, did uh, Frank put out? Uh, I think he put about 67 albums out or something. Wow. Like three thousand dollars to buy all the CDs. Yeah, but it's worth it. All right, Patrick. Thank you very much. See Take ya. care. All right. And we'll be back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. It is Adam Carolla. We're here with Warren Cucurilla from that band, Duran Duran. We didn't really talk, and Dr. Drew, of course. We didn't really talk much about uh, missing persons. A very, uh, I mean, very new wave, very hot in the 80s. Very, very L.A. Very L.A. Yeah. yeah. What, what's Dale Bozio doing uh, these days? Oh, she's, you know, I've been in touch with Dale. I've been in touch with everybody from the band. But she's, you know, she's working on some new songs. And, um, you know, she's just trying to get things together, get out there and play. That was uh, such the quintessential mid or early 80s type of, type of L.A. band. I mean, she's dancing around in saran wrap. Mm. The songs, the songs are very hey, like uh, like new wave, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah. And you had a we lot. Had, of... We had a lot of influences, but yeah, we were going for that kind of. The reason we started the band, Dale wasn't really a singer. You know, she sang on Joe's Garage, but it was like the first time she ever even tried. And Frank just used it because she had a good sound. It wasn't because she sang, right? You know, but um, you know, there was bands like the Normal and the Flying Lizards coming out and the B52s, and it was kind of. Left of center, it wasn't like you didn't have to sing like uh, Joni Mitchell, you know. Right. And it, and she, and the look was there. We had this, 
visual thing in mind and and you know terry and myself and patrick we knew we can play anything so we thought let's start writing some music that's kind of in this in this kind of vein and she wasn't singing she was like what, it was kind working of, at a topless bar or something before she started up no with the she band? was a playboy model she was a bunny ah. and uh she was a one of the favorite bunnies yeah she certainly is uh i mean certain certainly better than looking at like janice joplin or aretha franklin or something like that <laughs> Not that they weren't great singers, but, you know, they didn't look good in plastic. <laughs> Kathleen. Yes. Hey, you're on Love Line. Hello, everybody. Hi. Okay. Hi. I'm from beautiful Lake Tahoe, California, oh. and I have been with the same guy. I've been married for four years. We've been together for ten, and we've been going through some rough times right now, and I'm starting to wonder whether we should be together or not. Do you have any kids? No, no kids. And, um... We're both kind of shy, and we got married, and everything was cool. But now I'm just questioning it. We've just there's we have nothing in common anymore, and I'm wondering whether we should stick it out. We've tried counseling. Counseling kind of led to nowhere, but we're just still hanging in there. What what is sort of the core problem? Well, we just don't do anything together anymore. We how, have how sex did that like happen? once a month. He's totally not interested. How did that happen? You have sex once a month? Yeah, like once a month. It's just not happening. So this guy's getting it all the time. <laughs> yeah. See, for me, that's that's a lot. Warren over here, just get up. Warren's on the floor. He's back up now. <laughs> Give him some smell and salt. He needs it like once an hour. As a matter of fact, he's got to go out and have it four times. Now, because he's been here, he's been, like, essentially celibate yeah. for almost two hours it's building now. building up, yeah. Uh, so, the, the, this is, like, basically one of the only guys you've been with, or? I've been with a lot of people. He's only been with one other person besides me. Did you ever have this problem before you were married? No, never. We were just so connected, and now we just seem to be so far apart. How did that happen? Um, I think that our interests just... I mean, we just don't have the same interests anymore, and we just seem to be cohabitating, and it's awful, and I wish I could get the magic back, but that's, it's just not happening. That's something that would happen over a period of years, though. It's not like it just happened, like, a few months ago, did it? I, I totally agree. I mean, it's been a long time coming, but we're at the point where it's either divorce or stick it out, and I just, I don't, you know. Well, there's, know there's no to need to be, to be miserable in a relationship. And if you don't have any children, it's, it definitely uncomplicates it. So, Did, uh, Does he feel the same way you do? Um, he wants to try one more time. He wants to see if we can work it out. And he's saying that he'll turn another leaf and give it to me more and do all the romantic things that I want and everything else. But, I mean, how long can that last? I mean, you want to put so much effort into it, but then you fall into the same old patterns. Now, so when you say he promised to give it to you more, <laughs> you, I, I'm going to take from that that he's the one who's he's only out. He's, up for sex. Yeah, he's always tired. He's always, I've had a long day. I've, I've been, you know, working until 1230 in the morning. And All right, but let me explain what Warren was doing last night. Warren played three hours of nonstop guitar licks. On some kind of bizarre timetable, where he he came from like a Micronesia, and it was it was it was seven o'clock Wednesday for him, and 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 basically on no sleep with no fluid left in his body, was ever to pleasure a geisha girl for I'm guessing about two hours. For two forty-five. <laughs> two two hours and forty-five minutes. God knows how long he would have gone with the dental dam in place. <laughs> so it's got nothing to do with being tired. Okay. Are you suspicious of him maybe fooling around on you? Did you bring no, that up? No, that's you, not. There's, there's the no way, right? Any suspicions? No. And there's absolutely no way. No. Mm -hmm. I, are you sure he's as shut down emotionally as you are? It, I'm, uh, uh, it sounds. One more time? I, I mean, is it, is it just that he's working so hard and literally just? Can't? I don't think he's working. <laughs> All right, Drew that. always right. works that angle. No, that's, Drew, just, that's just an angle to get out of giving me some. Yeah, there's two suspicions I'm starting to uh, work with Drew. A, he has the herpes, which we now call the happies. Because it makes people more comfortable. Well, it's a lot better than HIV. <laughs> the hives. No. Number two, I don't think he gets any sex because he always says, "Ah, oh, maybe the guy's just working too hard." Ah, <laughs> oh, maybe. And then he starts getting real specific. Maybe some old guy bit him during his practice. <laughs> Drew, am I right? You're not getting much, right? No. No. Yeah. Thanks for answering. Do, do you think what Drew. he's saying to you? Do you think if he does kind of get more romantic and give it to you more and Will it make you happy? I would totally be into it. I would love it. That I think that would fix half our problem. Well, then you should give it a try, that's, really. That's what I'm saying. Maybe he is not as shut down as you are. 
Maybe, maybe he just doesn't know how to find yeah, whatever but what that do you, is. What do you do? I mean, she's waiting on him, and he doesn't want to make his move. Right, right. Amen. And, and but, let, yeah. yeah, but do you kind of do you try do you try and instigate it though? Well, do you? I am the biggest instigator. I was the biggest. Well, let me just tell you something. Tag before or, I met him. Oral instigation. We'll get any man going. I don't care what's yeah. happening. Warren's right. Yell at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. You can no. A, a man cannot say no <laughs> when it's in your mouth. There's yeah, no just, way. It, it's just I don't care. I don't care if you're at a freaking funeral. <laughs> <laughs> and like you know the 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 the, the rabbi or the priest comes by. I don't care this, if once it gets going, it gets going. This is true. This is a boy thing. I'm telling you. You know, but, just uh, go down and... Kathleen, yes. You know. What you're telling me is just to, to instigate more and slap them around and tell them it's time. It, it's going to be a quick fix. Okay. You know what I mean? It's not It's not the long haul. It will, it will resuscitate his uh, sexual vigor. Yes. Guaranteed. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you so much for your advice. Blow him up like a life raft is what, is what basically she needs to do. But this is not going to be a long-term thing. This is not going to work. Nah. If the, the guy's lost interest. Who, who? You don't know. You don't All right. Know. Well, you, right. But you know, let's take the, bets. It's like that old. It's like the old Jewish joke with the enema. It couldn't hurt. Cameron. Adam. Hey. Hey, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Oh, thank you. And hello to your guests, and hello, Doctor Drew. Hi, Cameron. Um, first off, want to say, Doctor Drew, thank you for your commitment to showing up every night after a day's work. Thank you. Because I'm sure it could be hard. I'm getting locked in a room for two hours with Adam. Yeah, and what about me coming in here after my hey, well, vigorous you, Adam, napping Dr. and Mr. masturbatory Mr. Bertram, schedule? Mr. Bertram, i got to tell you, <laughs> you've got a lot more going on than you're willing to give yourself credit for. But enough of the compliments. Uh, right? Thank you. Um, Dr. Drew, it sounds confusing, and there's a lot of information and disinformation out there about HIV and the virus and all. Mm. But I was listening to a public radio station here in L.A. one night, and this doctor was going on and on about how the HIV virus is so many microns big and that the pores on a condom are so many microns large and that the whole safe sex thing is really an illusion about the fact that HIV virus can penetrate those larger pores in the condom. You heard anything like this? Yeah, there's a concern about that. Okay. There's a concern about it, but I think it has been shown to be a reasonably good risk reduction measure. It really has never been suggested that it is totally safe sex, All right. but it is a risk reduction measure. Just for instance, imagine the, the HIV virus, and I, this is, I'm, I'm sort of reasoning this out myself right now as I sit here talking to you. The HIV virus is very, very faintly present in semen fluid. It's not it's not highly concentrated like say hepatitis B it would be. It's 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 very few particles flying around there. Mm -hmm. It if for those particles to penetrate those pores, they would have to be right up against in the fluid, right up against the wall of the condom. Right? They could be floating anywhere in that semen. Right. And so you know it, it the fact is that the probability is it's a hell of a lot less than if the the whole fluid is then emitted well, uh, somewhere. That, that goes without saying. Okay, so and it I, is it I, is a I, very reasonable risk reduction. You problem. know what I keep and I you know what I'm picturing. Remember those guys got killed at that Who concert by getting smashed up against that gate. That was many years ago. I remember it happened in uh, Philadelphia. I just can't help. I, that's all I was picturing the whole time. I was talking about there was just a couple of these and they're mixed in and they're pushing hard against it. And I was just going, this kid's just poor. What, what about the other way though? Um, what about coming that, from that the woman? That was the scientific end of the question. One small um. Um, psychological question. Um, you saw my age in the screen, and let me tell you, there's a lot older than people than me listening to your show, I know for a fact. Um, I feel that when I am a, not necessarily approaching women, but, but dealing with women, say, in a bar atmosphere or out in the public as opposed to a more church environment or social environment where you see someone often, but as opposed to women strangers, I feel like I need to um, personally be more manly or macho than I really am, knowing that that all works and that I can play that game, but that's not really me. So it, it, instead of having to play the game, I would just soon not do it and, and stay at home. You understand what what saying, the Adam? hell is he saying? <laughs> Cam Cameron? Go ahead. They buy your macho rap, by the way? <laughs> what? No, no woman buys your macho rap. No, they dig it. They do not. They go for it. They go for the bathrooms where they go, Cameron. As long as they want me to. <laughs>
Cameron. Yeah. You stoned? Not even. I haven't smoked in a long time. Since noon, huh? No, no, no. Since, like, August. Really? Really. Really really stays in those fat cells, doesn't it, Drew? I'm a Santa Monica native, man. I'll laugh like that forever. All right. It's all that damn salt air and rent control. Seriously, if I want to act macho, I can get all the girls I want. But if I want to be myself, it seems like I won't ever, like, appeal to anybody. Are you being yourself now? I think I am. All right, I'd go for the macho. (laughs) I mean, he wasn't all that dazzling as himself. I'd go for the macho. But let, let let me ask something real fast, Drewski. Do they... I mean, do, have they tested a condom in the HIV virus and in, in, in trying to penetrate the I, I don't know. I've never read condom and all that. that. I know they've done a lot of studying on the pore size and you know, can the, could the virus penetrate this kind of thing. Because everyone just sort of takes it for granted. Oh, yeah, yeah, wear a condom. Uh, yeah. it, it's a, look, the, one of the sort of marketing uh, uh, measures that has been, is out there is to make people aware that these are risk reduction measures and not but truly they safe say like ninety percent though I mean that's what I've heard. well it, it's about as it appears to be about as effective as a barrier against sexually transmitted disease as it is as a contraceptive it's about eighty eight percent see I always thought that was because it wasn't put on right or it broke or right. something mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's something right slipped that, that's something the point that, the point being that it is an effective barrier but we're yeah but we're not talking about uh, it being able to penetrate I, I the fact is that that, that the the virus's ability to penetrate the pores may account for a percent or two beyond the contraceptive effectiveness rate. Okay, so you don't know. They, they did say that we the, don't know. the sheep, right. we don't the sheep know. condoms the sheep skins, were no The animal good. skins are no good. That's yeah. right for that. But what about coming from the woman, though? I, again, you have a reasonable fluid. barrier. Yeah, yeah, you have a reasonable just... barrier there. I mean, it's not perfect, apparently, but it's, mm. it's a reasonable barrier. And the uh, barrier Warren was using uh, last night was just his beard, basically. Exactly. <laughs> <That's>... A slight <laughs> growth. And we'll be back. Pee on this stick for me. A little taste of Ass Man from Warren Cucurillo off of Thanks to Frank. A uh, a bit of a cathartic song, I guess. <laughs> you admitting you were a uh, fanatic Ass Man at the uh, top of the show, Warren. I always will be. And we're going to line three. April. Hey, hello there. Hello. Oh, hello. hello, Dr. Drew and Adam. April. Hi. Uh, I have a question, and um, I'm... In a new three-month relationship, it's going on actually three months right now, mm. and it's a long-distance relationship. It's about 500-mile distance, and I only get to see my boyfriend approximately. I've only seen him once in the um, last three months. Mm. But um, he wants me to start um, giving him phone sex. Mm-hmm. And I, <laughs> I really, I mean, I have an imagination, but I'm really kind of embarrassed to um to say i don't i don't know what he wants to hear and um and i want to try to do it the best that i can but i blush and i don't know i i get i think i'm too romantic and i don't know if i need to be like really graphic or raw i don't know what guys like because i've never ever done this before well, well if you could just speak about what you'd be doing with him that, that that's kind of the easy way about it what'd you do with him last time you were with him you just have to kind of describe it yeah it's a recap it's a good thing to do, though. I, I mean, it might sound like overly kinky, but I think, you know, in a long, I'm an expert on long-distance relationships, and I don't have long-distance phone sex, but, I mean, it, it is a kind of a good idea because once you have an orgasm, and if, if he's on the phone with you, once you have the orgasm, it's like, you know, you, you feel okay. All right, April. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do, just to, so you can sort of cut your teeth. You know, with an expert, and with, with the safety of an expert. Like when you're in high school taking the driving test, they always put the, the guy next to you with the extra set of brake pedals and stuff just to make sure you wouldn't get in any trouble. Uh-huh. Warren over here happens to be a phone sex expert and a long-distance relationship expert. He's also a good-looking guy. He is. Okay. Yeah, you know. So mm-hmm. why don't you sort of cut your teeth with Warren? You're on the phone. It's just you and he. I got my hand on it. And this <laughs> That's what I, let it go, baby. See, I, Just let it go, April. So, come. April, what are you wearing? Oh, uh, well, um, it depends on what you want me to be wearing. Not much. Not much? No. Do you have any heels with, around the house? 
Oh, no, those are in the closet. Oh, get them out of the closet, please. See, I have this huge smile no, on Come on, baby. No. Keep on, smiling. Keep, going, keep smiling. Keep I was this close. <laughs> <laughs> and it already doubled back on for a second time. Just get the f***ing heels. See, I, I don't see myself as that type of person. I'm not. All right, April. But April. look, he's, he's, he's reaching out to you, you know? Otherwise, he might be calling a hooker over. That's right. Hey, he's not going to call a hooker over. Don't say that. Well, you know what I mean. Just let it go, baby. You know what you can tell him? What? Get some porno videos. Well, of course he... I mean, he's a guy, but I mean, we don't get to see each other a, a, a lot. April? So, yeah. April. We're yeah. going to give you one more chance at All this. Right. Now listen. All right. Take, yeah. a, take a deep breath. <sighs> yeah. Okay, relax. I'm relax. Where's your hand? My hand? I don't want to be too explicit on the radio. Well, you got to keep your hand there, though. Oh, well, it's there. Because that'll loosen up your that'll loosen up your tongue a bit. Oh, okay. So once your hand is in place, let your mind wander a little bit. Yes. And uh, just imagine what you'd like to be doing with this groovy soul music on. <laughs> Come on, I'll, I'll give you my Barry White voice, darling. Well, if I uh, if I had you here right now. Or if I had him here right now. Well, both of us. Oh, both of you. Oh. <laughs> All okay. right. I'd get him up. Okay. Well, I'd softly caress his chest and gently kiss his neck. Mm -hmm. And move from ear to ear, gently sliding my tongue inside each ear. I don't know. Phone <laughs> foreplay. Phone foreplay. Okay. You know what you should do? Why don't you invest like uh, about three ninety and call up one of those nine seven six numbers and hear what the girls are saying? And just Even really, God himself it really wants you to get him off. That's what you're saying. No, look, he he wants to hear your voice. Of you know, course. he wants to get off with you. That's a good sign. Yeah. April, think, it really is a compliment. You understand? And it will it will stop him from straying. I mean, he's only human. And you have a really nice voice, I have to say. Uh. <laughs> Adam, uh. mm, he's just getting the color back. I'll tell you, though, when, when she broke, it was like my grandparents busting in on my 16th birthday. I'm in a party hat, my pants around my ankles, going to town. <sighs> Okay. That was a good like choice of music, too, in there, guys. Well, I was going. <laughs> Anne over there stuck to the seat. So I could actually maybe make money at this if I was good at it. you got a great voice. Hey, did you ever see that movie Shortcuts? Actually, that's a great thing. There's a movie called Shortcuts by Robert Altman. Yeah. Get it from the video store. Patricia Arquette. No, not Patricia Arquette. No, the other one. Um, no. She's a great actress, anyway. She was in Last Exit to Brooklyn. She's a great blonde actress, very talented. Uh, what's her she, name? She's great. Uh, she was in Fast Time at Ridgemont High. She was. Uh, she, anyway, get shortcuts, and she plays Jennifer a. Jennifer Jason Lee. Yes, she plays a phone sex operator, and she's got the rap that is unbelievable. It's pretty forward and vile, but you can get an idea. And, and she's she's saying some amazing stuff in there. It's a great. She's got some great dialogue. Check it out. All right, April. But you got a beautiful voice, and, and, you know, think about this. You can make money at this. Thanks. <laughs> Gentlemen. Warren, Gentlemen. you could make money at this, too, by the way. I was going to tip you out. You know, I knew I knew what my career could be. Gentlemen, been. half an hour ago, I had two people in acute heroin withdrawal. You gave me two minutes with six minutes. <laughs> six minutes. Six minutes of nonstop titillating entertainment that the family... Well, but look at the advice you gave the family. On, on that in those two minutes. You know. Yes, Drew, you... Provide the yin, and we'll take care of the yang. Yeah, but the yin needs to balance the yin. Don't Thank worry you. about the yin. <laughs> Robin. Hey, what's up, guys? Hi. Hey, now then. Hi, Warren. Hello. Um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah, Robin. About two years ago, I was diagnosed as having herpes, mm -hmm. and I have not had an Happies. Happies. Happy. Sorry. Happy. How, how was the diagnosis arrived at? I'm sorry? How, how was it you were diagnosed? Um, I had been just, like, having a lot of problems, whatever, and I went to a gynecologist, and she told me, straight out that's she, what I had. She looked at it, saw it, and yeah. said that's what it is. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And since then, I have not had an outbreak at all. I was just wondering if I could be like a rare case where I wouldn't have another outbreak or it's if not, I could have been misdiagnosed. Two it, years, did you say? It's not yeah. unheard of. You, you might have been mis misdiagnosed. It's, herpes is a difficult diagnosis to make clinically. Uh, and you may have had outbreaks that you really weren't aware of. Sometimes they can be very mild. Have you had any sexual partners since or new sexual partners? Yes. And were those protected encounters or not? Yes. So you're, if you'd had uh, sometimes when people have a new partner, they sort of rekindle the virus and it'll sort of come out then. 
So it's hard to know. I, I would, if I were you, still consider myself contagious, uh-huh. potentially. But don't worry about it. I mean, just keep getting the pap smears regularly. The only thing you need to worry about is the potential risk for uh, cervical cancer. And if you have the pap smears done regularly, that should be essentially yeah. taken away. And, uh, you know, even though you're not having outbreaks, it's possible you're still contagious. It's possible you're misdiagnosed, but I wouldn't take that risk right now. You should also take a L-lysine supplement every day. Well, she, but she's not having outbreaks. It's good to take it every day. It just, Couldn't hurt. It, yeah, I have it. I know about it. I haven't gotten it since 1989, though. Really? Yeah. Well, that's the way it typically is. It, it comes on for a few years, and then it burns out, and then just doesn't come back for long, long periods of time. Unless something brings it out, some kind of irritation. or A mega dose of arginine will bring it out. What's, it, what's arginine? It's, it's a, another amino yeah. acid. It, okay, you guys. Well, I, yeah. Now wait. I don't. I don't have this, but but Drew does. <laughs> <laughs> I do, and yeah, I'm. Yeah. Don't proud. laugh about it. Warren has it. That's okay? fine. I, I've dealt with it. It's it's not a, it's not a really a bad thing, but you do have to watch your diet. You do have to um, be aware of the sensations that you know bring on the outbreak. Like you'll know it. How far in advance do you think we feel something coming? Like out? I knew someone who used to get pains in her legs. Before right. Before she got it. And um, I never really got that. I would just kind of get an itching. I uh, have it on the, on the penis area. And um, like I said, 1989 was the last time I had it. Really? It never came out. But I do take a lysine supplement every day. Also, echinacea is supposed to be very good for it. So it's another kind of a herbal Does stress, boosting. W- now, I know, like, stre- will stress help and bring it on? Yes, definitely. Yeah. All right, all that gay shit. I used to call them. To I used to call them friction burns back in 1978. I didn't know, didn't I, know I had herpes right. exactly. Right. It's like oh, I think she had a ring on. There's yeah, a, there's a lot of people like that, and that's how it gets spread quickly. Yeah. yeah. Back to the phones, Blake. What's up, guys? Hey, Hi. Adam, Dr. Drew, Warren. Hey, can I thank you for the uh, the April call? That was good for me, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it worked, man. Hey, weird story for you. Um, my mom told us there's the uh, there's three brothers in my family. We're all like 25, 27, and 29. June, she told us we had a half sister that she gave up for adoption before she met my dad. And you got the hots for her? No, no, I don't. She's uh, she's okay though. But uh, so uh, she started talking to my uh, sister on a regular basis, and finally started. She lives in Chicago. I'm in D.C. And she started visiting her out there, and then finally, uh, just like two weeks ago, she decided to leave my dad or stepdad, and uh, sell her business and just move to Chicago. Your mom or your, your half-sister? My mom, okay. to, to, to move in with my half-sister. Now, here's the catch, though. My half-sister is gay, which I don't have a problem with, but she broke up with her lover to move in with my mom, and now they share this apartment together. And what's weird for me, though, is that they share the same bed, and I'm just kind of wondering what, you know, what's your take on that. It doesn't sound too healthy to is me. Your, really is, your mom, problem with that. is your mom a little wacky? No, I mean, I don't know if she's going through this midlife crisis thing or what, but it's just kind of like... How old is the half-sister? She's uh, 30. That's a little bit too old to be sharing a bed. This is, your, this is a half-sister from your dad. Okay, wait, well... This is not your mom's biological daughter in no. any way. Yes, it is. It uh, is? It is? Yeah. She, so was, you're, she, well, was, all right. she was pregnant at 19 and then gave her up and then immediately met my dad afterwards. All right, so your mom is sleeping with her biological daughter. At least there won't be any offspring. Right. So do you think there's just a, a feeling of closeness there that she just hasn't had, or do you think there's something going on? Or a lack of bedrooms. <laughs> there's, just, it's, there's something weird with the boundaries, isn't there? But you don't, she doesn't right? call my mom mom. She calls her by her real name, which is... But, 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 Blake, at the very least, there's something wrong with the boundaries here, right? Yeah. I, there's, I, there's no boundaries. It's like a, That's why I'm wondering if mom was a little kind of screwy beforehand. I mean, she seemed kind no, of a I mean, funny she, person or... No, she's been in a. Uh, she's been married for 21 years with my dad. Been in a stable relationship. But the daughter's a lesbian. She, the daughter's a lesbian. Okay. Well, I don't know. One. I'm. I'm. I'm going to go with any time you take uh, one or more lesbians and put them in a bed together, <laughs> you have lesbian love. That is my quotient. That is my lesbian <laughs> quotient. You take one part lesbian, one part other female, yeah. add add in one part bad, and you have a whole part lesbian. So this sounds weird. You're not making me feel any better, man. Oh, okay. That's How do you know they're like. sharing the same bed? Well, because I, I moved her out there, and, and uh, for the first night before they got the apartment, they we had separate hotel rooms, and they, they had one bed in the room. And whenever she went to visit, I mean, she's pretty open about it. Plus, when I we moved in that night, I mean, they shared the same bed. All right, Blake, listen, we only have a second. Here's yeah. what I would say. Okay. If you think your mom is a little unstable, 
and your sister. It's going to take both of them. I mean, they're going to have to be like the Menendez boys in terms on on the on the wacko scale to right. be having sex with each other. Right. Okay. If you think they're real normal and they never displayed anything, then I'm sure nothing's going on. Mm-hmm. If they have been a little wacko, there may be something going exactly. on. Exactly. That's what I was trying so to get So if you're at. real secure with the fact that both of them, and being a lesbian obviously doesn't make you a wacko, because I'm, I'm heterosexual doesn't mean I want to bang my mom. Right. I mean, not unless I've had a couple of beers. But the point is, and she's wearing that moomah that, you know, the light, <laughs> the light comes through the window just right. But the, the point is, is if they're not both whacked, then you're okay. You might suggest a futon for the spare room kind of thing. That might help. Yeah. <laughs> Send over a cot and uh, <laughs> like a tub of lube and call the day. Well, we're running very late, but I want to thank Warren Cucurilla for coming in. Oh, it's been great. You were a lot of fun and uh, real cool. And for that, I'm going to plug the hell out of uh, your new album, thanks to Frank. I urge everyone to go out and get that. It is out now. Friday, he'll be at the uh, Tower on Sunset at 1 o'clock performing and signing and doing everything else. So please buy the album. Go see Warren. And uh, we'll, you'll see Adam Kroll and Dr. Drew tomorrow night with Cracker. So that's it, then. The opinions expressed on Loveline by Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, or anyone are not necessarily ours. Be happy. Be happy. Happy, happy, happy. happy. Loveline's producer is Ann Wilkins. Thank you.